Well, hello there. Um, Mr. Lee here, and I just wanted to uh, make a quick video to uh, help uh, not only um, the students in my class, but also uh, families in my class uh, understand um, how the most recent math test was evaluated, uh, because it's very important that um, um, you have a very good understanding of how um, assessment and evaluation is happening in our class. Um, and also because um, when you look at the test, you might find, you know, there's writing everywhere and, and check marks and X marks and numbers and circles. And, and for you to comprehend that as an average person who's not in a grade 7 math class um, would be pretty amazing. So <laughs> um, here we go. So this is what the test looks like on the first page. And I just wanted to um, show you that um, you'll notice here that um, these questions, uh, multiple choice, 1 to 5, Okay, are what we call knowledge questions in math, and that means that there's a right or wrong answer, and it also implies that there's a simple, um, simple process to doing this. So um, uh, they either got it wrong or right. So as you can see, there will be checks and so on. Same thing for the short answer questions here. Uh, it usually implies that there's some sort of uh, strict math knowledge being tested, and you will either notice that they are wrong or right except for the fact that unlike questions 1 to 5, questions 6 to 8 um, require students to um, show a little bit of the process or um, um, indicate a couple of things. For example, in this question 6, they were asked to answer not only the area, but also to tell us what the name of the figure was. For example, a triangle, area of 12 millimeters squared, etc. Uh, as you move down, uh, to question 9 and 10, you will notice that uh, these questions require a little bit more in-depth thought because they are asked to um, draw and create a trapezoid and also to figure out the perimeter, perimeter and area. Okay, so if you look on the sheet that is the evaluation rubric, just turn to it right now, okay, this one for instance, you'll notice that there's a strict um, uh, some might say old-fashioned style um, uh, numbering system here. So uh, 5 out of 5, 6 out of 6, 10 out of 10, etc. But that for those uh, two questions that we just looked at, 9 and 10, you will notice that there is not a numbering system like that, as in 7 out of 7 or 6 out of 8 or whatever. It's instead uh, based on our achievement chart Ontario rubric. And so this, these two questions were measuring thinking and communication. So those were the two things that it was measuring. And a um, student would either be at level three, achieving at expectations, level four, going above it, or somewhere below. Okay. Um, so now let's go to the, what we might call the biggest questions on the test. Now there was two questions, 11 and 12, which were the big application questions. And when we say application questions, what we really mean is that they are questions where students are to take their knowledge, their thinking, and their communication and put it all together. So it's kind of like when if you were to study to um, bake a cake, um, uh, the knowledge might be your knowledge about the ingredients and, and the process and so on, and thinking might be the ideas that you come up with to make your cake creative. Communication might imply um, how you explain uh, the cake's process and so on. And the application is putting it all together and actually making the cake. So in these two questions, um, we were measuring um, knowledge, thinking, communication, and application all at once. And so I won't go through um, too in depth about the answer itself, but I will tell you that in the rubric here, um, you'll notice that all four parts are measured. Okay. And it is possible, it's definitely possible, for example, that a student might have achieved um, very highly in knowledge on this question, but not so much in communication, because perhaps they didn't communicate their um, understandings or the process very clearly. Um, you might also notice that um, uh, they might have you know, uh, achieved all at a similar area. Okay? You'll also notice that um, when minor calculations are, are, are incorrect, it still does not necessarily affect the thinking, the communication, or even necessarily the application. It might just mean that they made um, a, a, an inaccurate calculation while they were calculating area, for instance. So the knowledge score might be a bit low. 
And it's possible, for instance, that a student might score level two in knowledge, but level four in communication. So that's why we're breaking this down. And you'll also notice, finally, that in the chapter one test assessment, that there is no final mark, okay? Because it would be a very artificial way of, um, of explaining uh, your child's development in this area. It's much better for not only um, me as a teacher, but also you as a parent, and most importantly, for the student, him or herself, to understand that there are parts to their learning and that um, there are parts that they are um, exhibiting strength in and there are parts where they need to work. For example, if I were to give a whole mark here, it's most likely that a student would focus in on that whole mark, for example, um, a level 4 or 56 out of 45, uh, excuse me, 46 out of 55, um, but it's much better if a student knows that um, they were strong in communication but need to work on knowledge and understanding. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.